Hi there. I'm Tim Herman uh, from the MSOE Center for Biomolecular Modeling. And welcome to this year's protein modeling event. We have a really great topic for you this year, and that is CRISPR. Uh, this first video is just to introduce you to this topic and to point out some of the resources that we put on this website for you to use as you're preparing for this event. First, let's talk about CRISPR. CRISPR is one of the hottest topics in the molecular biosciences. CRISPR is a tortured acronym that stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. And that probably doesn't mean much to you right now, but trust me, in a very short time, uh, you will you'll understand what those words mean. CRISPR is not a protein. Uh, CRISPR is a system of proteins that work together to provide protection to bacteria against the viruses that are trying to infect the bacteria. And in fact, the CRISPR system is often referred to as an adaptive immune system in bacteria. So one of the proteins of this CRISPR system is known as the Cas9 protein. And I actually have a physical model of Cas9 right here. This is the protein that, uh, that actually protects bacteria from viruses by recognizing the viral DNA that's being introduced into the bacteria. So Cas9 is an endonuclease, meaning it can bind to and cut the DNA sequence at a very specific nucleotide sequence. So Cas9 is somewhat similar to another endonuclease that you may be familiar with, and that is a restriction enzyme like ECOR1 or BAMH1. So this is a model of the ECOR1 restriction enzyme. You can see here perhaps some white double-stranded DNA. It's actually two subunits of the enzyme which are bound. And this functions as another defense system in bacteria against viruses. If a virus inserts a piece of its DNA containing this GAATTC palindrome, then the ECOR1 restriction enzyme will find that site, bind to it, and cut it. These restriction enzymes are part of a restriction modification system that was discovered to exist in bacteria way back in the 1970s. Once researchers understood how the enzymes were working, they started using them in a the laboratory to cut DNA up into discrete fragments that could be put back together again in novel ways leading to DNA cloning and genetic engineering. But at the same time researchers were discovering these restriction enzymes back in the 1970s, there was another system that existed in these bacteria, another immune system, which we now refer to as CRISPR. But it was going to take another 30 years after the discovery of restriction enzymes for researchers to actually figure out that this other immune system which Cas9 is a major component, was there and working. And then they began to understand how they might be able to take this enzyme and use it in some even more powerful genetic technology that is going to ultimately lead to editing of eukaryotic genomes, even humans. So here's a very brief initial introduction to this CRISPR system. And we're going to do that by looking at two different models of the Cas9 protein. So the first model we're going to look at is a foam model. This is a very schematic, two-dimensional model of the, of the protein. In this schematic model, the Cas9 protein is represented by this white foam structure. Cas9 is an endonuclease, just like a restriction enzyme. But one important way that it differs from a restriction enzyme is that it contains a piece of RNA known as a guide RNA. And that's the orange component of this model. And at the phi prime end of this guide RNA, there's a 20 nucleotide long sequence that is complementary to one strand of viral DNA. So Cas9 is actually an RNA programmed endonuclease. It is fundamentally different from a restriction enzyme in that it carries a guide RNA that is going to direct it to a specific nucleotide sequence in DNA where it will cut. One more detail that you will need to know is that Cas9 begins by looking for what's known as a PAM site in the DNA. The PAM site for Cas9 is just a short nucleotide sequence 
when Cas9 finds this sequence in the viral DNA, it binds to that site and then begins to separate the two DNA strands and uses its guide RNA to determine if the DNA is from a virus. If it is, the target DNA strand will be complementary to the guide RNA, and this will trigger the two nuclease active sites of Cas9, and a double-stranded cut will be made in the DNA. And now, let's see how this Cas9 protein works using this 3D printed model of the protein. So the Cas9 protein is represented by this white surface model. This is a very large protein. I believe it's 1,368 amino acids long. And the orange structure that you can see here is the guide RNA that we were talking about. And you can see right here that the last 20 nucleotides of the guide RNA have actually base paired with the dark blue strand of DNA. Um, so the DNA is this double-stranded structure with a light blue non-target strand and a dark blue target strand. So I don't know if you can see this, but the PAM sequence is colored green right down here. So this Cas9 protein has found the PAM sequence. It's bound to the DNA. And then after binding, it begins to separate the two strands of DNA. And then this guide RNA interrogates the dark blue strand to ask if it's complementary to the guide RNA. If it is, the Cas9 protein knows that this is a viral DNA sequence. And that will activate two separate nuclease domains in the Cas9 protein which will cut the non-target strand here, it'll cut the target strand there, and as a result, the, the viral DNA is cut in both strands. So that's how the Cas9 protein works in the CRISPR system. But the focus of this protein modeling event is actually on another protein called anti-CRISPR. In particular, an anti-CRISPR protein known as ACR, a. So this anti-CRISPR protein binds to the Cas9 protein in a certain place that you're going to have to figure out where it binds. As a result of binding, it inactivates or inhibits the Cas9 protein so that it can no longer cut up viral DNA. So the anti-CRISPR protein is actually a protein that is has evolved in the viruses, the bacterial virus, for the purpose of incapacitating this immune system and bacteria. And as a result then, the virus can effectively, successfully infect the bacteria. So what other resources will you need in order to prepare for this event? Uh, there are about four of them that you'll find on this website. You'll need to learn something about the basic principles of chemistry that drive protein folding. And on the website, you will find a number of resources that talk about these principles of chemistry and protein, primary, secondary, tertiary, even quaternary structure. You should also check out the PDB 101 web pages on the Protein Data Bank website for some additional resources dealing with protein structure and function. Number two, you'll want to know more about this Cas9 and CRISPR system that we've been talking about. And you can do that by watching any number of, of a series of outstanding short videos that are linked to from this website. Uh, these videos address a variety of different topics of the CRISPR system at different levels of complexity. Number three, as you construct your physical model of the anti-CRISPR protein, you'll want to read the original papers that describe this structure. Uh, so we're going to provide some PDF copies of actually two different papers because this structure was determined by two different lab groups almost simultaneously and published within a couple months of each other in different journals in 2017. So you'll find copies of those papers which have actually been annotated to make it a little easier for you to figure out what parts of those papers you should pay attention to. And finally, you'll find something new this year on, on the Protein Modeling website. And that's a section that we're going to call Ask the CBM. And this is a site where you can submit questions that you may have as you 
read about and try to understand this CRISPR system. And then we'll take those questions that you submit and we will post some videos addressing those questions on that website. So uh, have fun exploring the website. Feel free to ask us questions there and we will respond to those questions with more videos like this one. Thank you.